Hello everyone, I'm the Quiet F, and this is the recap of the first episode of Fluffy Paradise. So, without further ado, let's recap. A woman is walking home late at night, exhausted after another day working overtime, wishing she would get home to get some sleep. As soon as she enters the house and closes the door, she loses her balance and falls on the floor, wondering if she is dying. Her name is Midori Akitsu, and she's 27 years old. Her soul leaves her body, and she can't believe that she actually worked herself to death. She didn't want to die like this, she didn't have anyone by her side, and she couldn't even say goodbye to her parents. Then someone speaks to her, asking if they should intervene. It was God, and he says that her lifetime can't be changed, but if she helps him, he can change how she dies. In a world known as Asdilon, humans are currently persecuting other species. God would like to reincarnate Midori there so she can decide if the humans should be wiped out of the world. She doesn't want to help with that, but God says he can grant her a special power in exchange. It can be anything she wants, like teleportation or killing abilities. But she decides she wants the ability to pet fluffy things. She has always dreamed of petting her parents' cat. She wants the healing power of stroking that silky fur all day long. Petting fluffy animals is the only thing that suits her exhausted heart. God doesn't understand her wish really well, but he accepts her request and says that he will make non-human creatures like her. She still hasn't agreed to help, but God has spoken, so it's decided. She wakes up in another world surrounded by her new family. Her conscience is still the same, but she can't speak or move. Her mother decides her name will be Nefertima, Nefertima Osfe, and her sister decides she'll call her Nima. Her father picks her up and, while she cries, she still can't believe she really reincarnated in another world. She is now living in the kingdom of Gashi, which lies in Larchia, the largest of the three continents of Asdilon. She is the third born to the royal ducal family of Osfi. Her older brother is called Ralph, and her older sister is Karna. She has a beautiful mother and a kind father, but he can be a bit disappointing at times. And also, there's Dee, her beloved dog, who is always there for her. She spends her days eating, sleeping, surrounded by her family, and petting fluffy animals. And she couldn't wish for a better life. One day, her mother needs to go to work at the royal palace, but she doesn't know what to do since her father is working and her siblings are at the academy, so there's no one to take care of Nima. Animals aren't allowed at the palace, so she can't take Dee. She makes Nima promise she'll behave and they go to the palace, and Nima is really excited to leave the house. As they pass through the city, she observes that everyone is cheerful and lively, and they also seem pacific, not anything like the kind of people who would persecute others. In the palace, her mother makes sure Nima is gonna be okay by herself and casts a protective spell on her. Then she goes to work. Nima is feeling bored being all alone when she sees a bird flying outside. She opens the window and climbs out, running after the bird. Soon enough, a lot of forest animals surround her and she starts petting them all. But something in the middle of the woods scares the animals and they all flee. This something was an enormous white tiger who comes face to face with Nima. She looks at him and her eyes shine with the sight of such a rare fluff and she wants so hard to get close and pet him. Then the tiger comes closer and gives her a big lick on her face and she feels safe enough to hug him. The tiger lies down and she climbs on him, and they go for a walk in the garden. Then, someone asks who the tiger had in his back. It was a guy sitting on a tree, and Nima thinks he's beautiful. He says the tiger's name is Lars, and even though he's well behaved, he's still a beast which could be dangerous, so he asks her to get down. He picks her up and she gets mad, but he just keeps teasing her, until Lars takes her from his hands and puts her down. And the guy is amazed since Lars doesn't usually take to anyone other than him. He asks Nima where are her parents and what she's doing there, and she says her mother is working. When she introduces herself, the guy realizes she's from the Osfei family, and decides to take her to her father, who's also in the castle. The boy says she found her playing with Lars in the yard and thought she was lost, so he decided to bring her to Duke Osfei. Nima explains she came there with her mom and was feeling lonely, so she went to play with Lars, and her father thanks the boy for bringing her to him. He calls the boy his highness and Nima realizes the brute guy who picked her up and teased her is actually a prince. She reluctantly thanks him as he teases her again. But then, the king approaches her, and she decides to put on a show for him, causing a not-so-timid reaction from her father. The king introduces himself as Gaudi Rus Gashi, king of Gashi, and says she is welcome to visit again. Her mother is a bit angry at her for running away, and also for riding a sky tiger. She doesn't understand what it means, and her father says she was talking about Lars. Nima says she and Lars are friends, and she wants to go visit and play with him again. Her mother accepts it, but she makes her promise she won't visit the Sky Tiger if there's someone watching. Lars is special, he's a holy beast who uses elemental power, which is the divine power that fills the world. 
Typically, holy beasts only get attached to their master, with whom they form a bond. Nima really wants to see Lars and pet him, so she promises to do that only when the sky tiger is by himself. She goes play with Dee while her parents talk. Her mother still can't believe she befriended a sky tiger, and her father wonders if she has some kind of special power. On another day, Nima and her family go to the school to observe her brother and sister's exams, and she's really excited because she never goes anywhere other than the castle. There are so many people there, and she wonders if she'll find some rare animals as well. Her mother tells her not to run away and hold her hand. They get to their seats and there's a lot of refined food and tea. There's a battlefield scenery in the arena, and Nima can't believe they're at school. Her father explains that it's all the product of several teachers' magic, who command the soldiers and battle one another. It's time for her brother to fight, and she's a bit worried for him. The battle begins, and after a few brawls, Ralph is victorious, and Nima runs to hug him. But she has to get down from his hug because she has to pee. When she gets out of the bathroom, she sees Ralph talking to another boy. Ralph says he has to leave now that Nima arrived, but the guy tells him to make the servants take care of her, unless Ralph is going to use her as an excuse when he defeats him. Nima is furious and says her brother is not going to lose, but the boy says a kid won't know anything about that. Nima is very angry at him for speaking that way to the ducal family at the head of the line from the throne, and she won't let this pass. She yells at him that being a kid is better than being a dummy who doesn't know his place. She realizes she got carried away and the boy tries to attack her but the prince arrives right when Ralph blocks the guy's way. He asks what is happening, as he's just seen Tristan Disdow raise a hand against a child. Tristan denies it, but the prince doesn't believe him since Nima is hiding and looking scared. But she was actually hiding to avoid getting caught by Prince Brute, as she calls him. Ralph didn't know the prince and Nima had met, and he explains what happened the other day. He keeps teasing Nima, and she gets pissed, but he says that if she lets him play with her, she could get into the castle anytime she wants and the idea of being able to play with Lars all the time gets her excited. Tristan doesn't understand how is it possible for the prince to give a kid free reign on the palace, but he says the king likes her, so there's no problem. Ralph interrupts him and says that their sister is presenting soon, so they have to go. The prince says he's going with them, and tells Tristan that Nima is under his protection, so he mustn't do anything to her ever again. Tristan is terrified and runs away. The prince looks closely at Nima and realizes she has black eyes, which is pretty rare in that world. Nima is afraid he's suspicious of her and says her eyes are actually blue. When the prince calls her Nefertima, she says he could call her Nima, like her family does. So the prince says she could call him Will. They go to the arena to watch Karna's presentation. And when the duke and her wife bow to the prince, Will says that they're his only student and they're actually his mentors, since they're alumni of the academy. Karna's test involves using magic to defeat a monster summoned by a magic circle. She starts the incantation, but instead of summoning a common monster, she invokes a huge fire dragon, a holy beast. The teachers get ready to protect Karna, while Will talks to her father about the essence of her magic. She is highly skilled with fire, but her water magic is low, so she would be in big trouble against a fire dragon. But Nima realizes Karna is ready to fight, and even their mother is excited. She thinks this is madness and Karna should run away, so she has to do something. She jumps from Will's arms and jumps into the arena without thinking. She is in free fall, but her mother's protection magic slows her down as she lands safely at the bottom. The water mages are about to attack the dragon when Nima runs towards it, yelling for them to stop. She puts herself between the dragon and the mages, telling them not to hurt it, and everyone is shocked with the courage of this little girl. That's it, that was the first episode of Fluffy Paradise, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, hit the notification bell so you won't miss anything new. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye!